This is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Bill Butel, Scott Clark with Sports, Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, everybody. I'm Diana Williams, in tonight for Bill Butel. Religion offers hope for many, but one man's religious ritual apparently ignited flames of tragedy. Firefighters say that a nightly ceremony using candles set off a deadly fire that swept through a home in the Bronx. Kay Kasuda is there right now with the very latest. Kay? Diana, fire marshals tonight say that it appears an accident during a religious ritual involving candle lighting caused two deaths at this home. Friends and relatives are trying to cope with the news. There is little left of the Morrisania home Alice Oglesby shared with her seven-year-old niece, Candace Schaefer, shown here with her cousin. Both died after a fire swept through their three-story row house last night. More than 150 firefighters were needed. The fire also damaged nearby homes. Today, Oglesby's sister-in-law, May Nazim, had to visit the scene herself. I can't believe it. I think it's a nightmare. You know, I, I mean, I, I just don't believe it. My son was just down here with them on Friday. Candace Schaefer's mother arrived later and was led into a neighbor's home. Fire marshals say one of the occupants of the building, a Timothy Durkins, was in the process of putting out a candle as part of a religious service when that candle apparently fell into some combustible material. Investigators say Durkins was on the second floor. They say he apparently tried to get some water to douse the flames. He and the building's owner escaped. The two victims were on the top floor. And upon being told of the fire, they called out, we cannot come through the smoke. They were afraid to come down the stairs. May Nazim says Durkins would often leave candles burning for long periods of time. He was burning them for some kind of weird stuff that he said somebody was, this girl that he dated was trying to do something to him and he was burning these candles. So I don't know, I ain't into that, but that's what he was telling me. Memories of the fire are likely to haunt those who survived it, like neighbors Regino and Candace Pena, who alerted their own family to get out. We just heard the smoke alarm. You heard your smoke alarm? And I heard um, Candace and Alice, the little girl, they were screaming fire, and all I sm smelled smoke. I, I was in the downstairs, my husband was sleeping, and because of my kids were here today, because they woke up and, and they, we all got out safely, thank God. And fire marshals say what the victim's family should have done in retrospect was close the door to the room with the fire and leave the building immediately. One neighbor says the religious ritual she believes Durkins performed, a form of Santeria, is supposed to bring luck to the house. Reporting live from the Bronx, Kay Kusuda, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Three Florida men are in custody tonight charged with using the flames of hate in an attempt to kill a black New Yorker. Christopher Wilson was abducted and set on fire in this field on New Year's Day. Wilson remains hospitalized in serious condition with burns over 40% of his body. Police arrested three men today after one suspect told friends that he had driven the getaway car. Sources that came in late this afternoon panned out and we uh, were able to uh, question this juvenile. And as I said, he's admitted to the crime. It uh, happened as the suspect or as the uh, victim had indicated it happened. Police say the men may be prosecuted under Florida's tough hate crime law. Police also say that a note signed KKK was found near Wilson's abandoned car. Well, there's now a new law here in New York City that will help biased victims. It allows them to sue for unlimited damages. Now, that means that victims of racial slurs and violence or those who suffer damage from, say, spray painting can file claims against the offenders. Up until now, only the city's corporation council could take action. New York's school's chancellor, Joseph Fernandez, wants parents to be able to take action and have a choice in where to send their children to school. At a Board of Ed public hearing today, parents had a chance to speak out about the plan that would allow them to put their kids in any school, even outside their current district. And that means that single parents can put their children in schools closer to their work. According to Fernandez, it might also help reduce overcrowding, but most parents at the hearing today weren't convinced. It is not clear to me how this proposal will support successful programs. The choice of law does not, will not, and cannot reform education in the United States. The board will vote on the plan later this month. School choice isn't the issue in Connecticut, it's integration. Connecticut's governor is proposing sweeping changes for the state's public schools that will offer a lesson in integration for students and their parents. Celeste Ford joins us now from Bridgeport with the latest. Celeste? 
Diana, educators here in Connecticut say Governor Lowell Weicker has proposed some of the most revolutionary changes anyone can remember. He wants to integrate the schools statewide. Now, whether or not his plans pass the state legislature, most observers agree they signal a new awareness. I remember all here. What kind of problem? What a difference a few miles can make. In Bridgeport, 85% of the students are minorities, while in neighboring Trumbull, minorities make up 7% of the students. This disparity was the subject of the governor's State of the State address. Today, despite all good intentions, there are two Connecticut's when it comes to the education of our children. Connecticut's separated by racial and economic divisions. Governor Weicker wants a voluntary integration program. Under his proposal, the state would be divided into six educational regions. Then the local school districts would develop a desegregation plan for their area. The program would take effect during the 1995-96 school year so that by the turn of the century, each local school district would reflect the racial makeup of its region. Maybe the world will be better, you know, mm -hmm. it's like peace and harmony. It's like not white with white and black with black and stuff like that. I think that would be um, a good opportunity for the other students to be mixed in mm -hmm. with um, like different cultures and stuff. Governor Weicker admitted he's responding to a lawsuit underway in Hartford. Parents are challenging the segregation of the schools, and if the state loses, the courts could impose an integration plan. That's something many educators don't want to see. The Bridgeport superintendent favors a voluntary response, but... And I don't see any suburban parent volunteering, for the most part, to put their youngster into a, into a city program unless unless they felt the quality was exceptional. And suburban parents have reservations. Standards. Here in Trumbull, we have very high standards of education. I'm concerned that the proposal will tend to lower our standards as, approved, as opposed to raising the standards of Bridgeport, which certainly needs to be raised. The details of the governor's plan are expected next month. Governor Weicker has said they will not include the forced busing of students from one school district to another. And we're live in Bridgeport. I'm Celeste for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Celeste. New York City tonight is now offering some new rights to unmarried couples, including homosexuals. The mayor issued an executive order today that allows domestic partners to register with the city. It enables them to gain some rights previously available only to married couples, such as hospital visitation rights. Well, the right of gays to march in this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade is again creating a St. Pat spat. There's a reported clash between the mayor and the city's top cop, delaying the announcement of a parade sponsor. But tonight, both men deny there's a problem, as Pat Dawson reports. It was only a momentary meeting in the halls of police headquarters, and hardly private. This is not an availability. They are just eavesdropping. Surrounded by the media, the mayor and his police commissioner were a study in warm relations following the published report that the two were at odds over a parade permit for St. Patrick's Day. The stormy political matter of Irish gays and lesbians marching is a disputed legal question for the third year in a row. The mayor, who marched with the gay group two years ago and last year refused to march when they were excluded, again left no doubt how strongly he feels about the issue. I have, not just to the commissioner, but to the world over a long period of time. Remember me? I'm the fellow who marched in the parade. Both the mayor and commissioner were publicly at pains to deny the story that they disagreed over whether the permit should go to a group that would allow the gays to march this year. All sides conceded that the police department was legally responsible for granting permits. But in private, senior Dinkins aides strongly suggested that Kelly not only wouldn't confront the mayor on such a high profile issue, but that he was personally in agreement. Today, the commissioner appeared to be saying just that. I believe that anyone who wants to march in a parade and has some connection to Irish culture should be allowed to march in a parade. That's my own personal view. He knows my feeling. He knows as, as, as all of you do. And presumably the commissioner, whatever his personal feelings, knows the political cost of taking a position counter to the mayor's. At City Hall, Pat Dawson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. There is another political battle, this one between Iraq and the Allies. Iraq's envoy to the United Nations delivered his country's answer to an ultimatum within the last hour, an ultimatum which demands that Iraq remove all anti-aircraft missiles from the no-fly zone by tomorrow. 
Tappy Phillips is live at the United Nations right now with the very latest. Tappy? And Diana, there was a meeting here set for 5 o'clock this afternoon. It was very brief. It is broken up now, and the participants are now leaving the United Nations. The uh, participants in that meeting were ambassadors from the United States, Great Britain, France, and of course Iraq. They were waiting to hear Iraq's response to that demand that they remove those anti-aircraft missiles from the no-fly zone, that no-fly zone that was set up after the Persian Gulf War. We are told that the Iraqi response was in the form of a letter, but it was difficult to tell if they'd agreed to comply or not. Well, we got a reply from the Iraqi representative, and I will send it on to Washington and let them decide what it says. They will evaluate the response, which is as it should be. The Iraqi response was focused on the Iraqi right of sovereignty and uh, moving its uh, uh, civilian and military uh, material within the uh, space and within the territory of the country. And Iraq has uh, decided to not to give up that right. Well, this letter has been sent to the heads of states of all the nations involved. Well, Ambassador Perkins told us that it's on its way to Washington now for evaluation. We can only assume that perhaps the, the response is not clear. He didn't seem to have a clear response to it. We understand that the heads of states will evaluate that and that they will decide later on how to respond. We're live at the UN. I'm Taffy Phillips, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. When we come back, the EPA puts the heat on secondhand smoke, and New York State officials are planning to do the same, some drastic steps to crack down on lighting up. And cops and quotas. Some Nassau County police officers say they're being forced to make certain arrests by the numbers. Those stories next. There's a new low price leader in health and beauty care products. It's not a drugstore or discounter. It's ShopRite. We're reducing the everyday price of over 3,000 items. Over 3,000 health and beauty items on sale? Not on sale. Marked down to a new everyday low price. Small price cuts, right? No, big price cuts. Now we can do all our shopping at ShopRite. And save. Compare and save. We save you money. Every day. ShopRite does it right. The marathon continues, the biggest event of the year, Siemens Clearance Marathon. It's going on now. We're continuing to empty our two giant warehouses to clear the way for 93. That means the most drastically reduced prices of the year on many items in our huge $40 million inventory. And today, look for extra special values on Siemens' huge selection of living room and dining room grouping, some actually at or below cost. So see Siemens first. There's never been a better time. Siemens Clearance Marathon. Run to it now. Great Scott, it's built by Bonds Labenthal. You see just a sewer? I see great public works down here, built by the tax-free bonds I sell. My bonds are in paper, they're tunnels and waterworks, the nuts and bolts that make New York work. But that's not why you buy my Labenthal New York bond fund. You buy it for money, interest income free of New York City, state, and regular federal income tax. Love tax-free money? Love my sewers. These moms don't know what to do about their grown sons who won't get out of the house. I'm enjoying my life with my mother. But our audience had a few ideas. You're not showing any responsibility. You haven't even made an attempt to go out and get a life. Your mom said you don't even pay rent. You should kick him out, Sandra. Do not let him stay. Same we're, thing, we're to move back home. Wait a minute, I'm talking here. <laughs> okay? The moms, they're mooching sons in one very opinionated audience on the next Oprah. Tomorrow at 4, followed by Eyewitness News here on Channel 7. Some Nassau County police officers say that they're under pressure to get drunks off the road, so much so that they have to operate under a quota system. N.J. Burkett is live in Baldwin, Long Island, with more on this controversy. N.J. Diana, one of the island's most prominent defense attorneys is calling on the DA's office here in Nassau County to investigate what may be serious allegations against the county police department. The commanding officer of the first precinct here in Baldwin is being accused by his own officers tonight of imposing quotas on DWI arrests. DWI is, by all accounts, among the highest priorities in the Nassau County Police Department. But tonight, officers in the county's first precinct are afraid their supervisors have gone too far. It started in uh, early November. Officer Warren Healy works in the first precinct and is an official in the county's police union. This fall, roughly 30 officers received this notice in their mailboxes. The officers were told that even routine shift changes would have to be approved now by the precinct commander himself. What the officers had in common is that they had gone the entire year without a single DWI arrest. Healy says one of the patrolmen was offered a deal by the precinct commander. Uh, he was questioned uh, about the fact that he didn't have any drunk driving arrests for the year. 
he was then told that uh, after he gets a drunk driving arrest, he should come back and then they could talk about the tour change. What was the officer's reaction? Uh, the officer went out and got a drunk driving arrest and then got a tour change. Union officials accused the department of using quotas to boost sagging DWI arrest. There were 397 arrests in the first precinct in 1991. Last year, there were just 331, a drop of 16.6%. Commanding officers feel it is their responsibility to keep the enforcement levels in DWI high enough so they have an impact for the safety of the community. Chief Ed Dowdy admits his precinct commanders are under pressure, in his words, to be productive, but absolutely denies the use of quotas. If a police officer tells another police officer, go out and get me a drunk driving arrest, that an arrest could occur that is not based on true facts and circumstances, that there's no basis for the arrest. Dominic Barber says tonight if the charges are true, they could raise serious doubts about recent DWI arrests here in the first precinct jurisdiction in Baldwin. It is important to emphasize, though, that the union believes uh, that the arrests were legitimate. No reason to think they were illegitimate. Important to emphasize that. We're live tonight. The First Precinct, Baldwin, Long Island. N.J. Burke at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Armed with a new federal report that shows secondhand smoke causes cancer, New York State is moving to virtually ban smoking in public places. Governor Cuomo is submitting legislation to ban smoking from all school grounds and to restrict people from lighting up in public areas, especially where children gather. Mm. Tobacco use is the single greatest cause of death in New York State, killing more than 30,000 people every year. Well, the Yankees are trying to make sure that their season doesn't go up in smoke this summer, and these are some of the people that they hope to put them on the winning track. Meet the new kids on the Yankees block, coming up in sports. Now, this teenager has a claim to fame that may be his alone. And he does it all by the letters. It's all a part of life around here. I'm Forrest Sawyer. Coming up on World News Tonight on the American Agenda, a question for parents. Should newborn babies be vaccinated against the liver disease hepatitis B? Some doctors call it a waste of resources. Others insist it could save lives. Two oh. L. L's, yep. And O. Care to solve the puzzle? Be a wheel watcher. Tonight at 7.30, right here on Channel 7. Only time for Quaker 100% natural. You're missing a lot of the fun. Any way you crunch, Quaker natural. You love it 100%. You love it. It tastes too good for breakfast alone. Swirl it in a yogurt, pour it on fruit. Top it on top of an ice cream cone. Any way you crunch, Quaker natural. Original and low fat. You'll love it 100%. Coming up on the next slide, some of the most unusual acts in the world, like those wild and crazy illusionists, Penn and Teller, who levitate regions. Ho, 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 it, Regis. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And from the hottest off-Broadway show in town, it's the Blue Man Group. <laughs> Plus the screaming champ of the world. So don't miss the next slide. Tomorrow at 9. Right here on Channel 7. Never thought you'd see a guarantee on a great lunch? Look again. It's Bennigan's Express Lunch. Guaranteed. 15 minutes or it's free. Guaranteed. Plus 12 lunch specials for $4.95 or less. Look again. It's Bennigan's. In our never-ending quest to seek out the rare and unusual, we have found a New Jersey teenager with an amazing talent. He can do something that few, maybe nobody else can, or for that matter, wants to do. But Steve Hartman says you've got to see it and hear it to believe it's a part of life around here. This is a weird story. This is a weird story. Sean Newman was going to rent some movies when he hit a bump. Just a little bump. There's the bump. A second later, he hit the brakes, pulled up to a stop sign, and underneath S-T-O-P... I saw the letters O-P-S-T up here. Scared the poor guy. I started crying because I was so scared. I was like, what's happening to me? What happened to Sean that day never went away. He's now a junior at West Windsor Plainsboro High School in New Jersey, where the students affectionately refer to him as the alphabet man. I can take the word, a word that a person gives me, right. and I can take all the letters in that word and put them in alphabetical order. I didn't know if it was normal. I've never met anybody like that before. B-E-F-O-R. It's just something that he has that is like nothing else. E-E-L-S. 
If he can spell it, he can do it. He's unstoppable. A B E L N O P P S T U. I just can't figure out how he does it so fast. A F S T. No thought goes into it. All he has to do is hear a word, and immediately the letters come out in alphabetical order. Sometimes it's so fast you don't even know if he's got it right or not, but he does. Bookshelf. B E F H K L O O S. Lamp. A L M P. Uh, light. G H I L T. Cord. C D O R. Stand. A D N S T. Computer. C E M O P R T U. Encyclopedia. A C C D E E I L N O P Y. Quadrants. A E D N Q R S T U. If you're looking for a scientific explanation to all this, sorry, no one's got one. This is weird. You realize this yeah, is weird. This is very weird town. I think we fed him too much alphabet soup when he was a kid. <laughs> That's what it is. I even checked with the pediatrician he's been going to his whole life. But he checks out fine otherwise. He checks out fine. Physically, he's totally healthy. Not even Sean has the foggiest. Doesn't worry about it much anymore. Doing fine in school, except spelling. For now, it's just something fun to play with. They try to stump me, and um, I haven't been stumped yet. So. Really? Yeah. Stumped. D-E-M-P-S-T-U. Had to try. Steve Hartman, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What a talent. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yankees yeah. brought in some new talent. Yankees, right? A-E-K, and as well. No, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> At 30 seconds to do it. <laughs> Yankees have brought in the new year by showing off some of their new personnel, players they feel are going to further their cause to making it back to the top. And coming up, general partner Joe Malloy, the lame duck, who will hand the reins back to the boss March 1st, introducing the pitcher Jim Abbott right there, the outfielder Paul O'Neill, and the shortstop Spike Owen. Three amigos looking for the same fiesta as the Yankees brass. I think the thing about this club and what I've heard, I don't haven't met everybody yet, but it's it's a group of good guys. And sometimes when you have that, that group of guys gels and becomes larger than their abilities. So knock on wood and hold judgment. Huh? Knock on wood and hopefully it'll work out. Nice guys finishing first? Could be. The baseball money just keeps on flying, though. Slugger Cecil Fielder has re-upped with the Tigers, signing a five-year deal worth $36 million, over $7 million per. Meanwhile, George Brett, the newest member of the 3,000-hit club, coming back to the Royals for an 18th season, but Brett is still angered at Royals management for their previous claims that Brett should retire. Although the brass has since apologized, Brett did not invite management to his news conference today. I just wanted to do this on my own right now. It was my decision. It wasn't theirs. Uh, they made their decision right when the season ended to exercise my option, and, and this is my decision. Well, hey, the king is back. No, Elvis has not been spotted again. Thank you very much. There goes something like this. Bernard King is back practicing with the bullets. Thank you. For the first time since undergoing knee surgery that sidelined him all last season, so it's major comeback number two for the king. I worked awfully hard to get back to the point where I could come out here and practice. I know that when I last uh, played for the Washington Bullets, I was an all-star. Um, I think that when you talk about a player of that caliber, you can't not but want a player of that caliber in your lineup. That's the bottom line. You bet. Nets news today. Former Knicks guard Maurice Cheeks has joined up to back up Kenny Anderson at the point. Cheeks, who was let go by Atlanta this season, will provide experience that Ramil Robinson hasn't had, or at least hasn't shown. And while another guard joins the Nets, another guard goes down. Drazen Petrovic suffered a serious ankle sprain last night in the loss to Philly. He'll miss tomorrow night's game in Boston. The Nets are missing a bunch of the two-guard spot right now. Hockey. Wayne Gretzky couldn't have returned to hockey. He had a better time. He comes back just as word comes out that the game's other superstar, Mario Lemieux, is going down to rest his back for a couple of weeks. Last night, though, the great one back as the Kings hosted the Tampa Bay Lightning and riding an eight-game winless streak, his club. Kings went down 4-0. Gretzky set up Rob Blake for the first of his two assists. His team ended up losing again, but... but. I honestly thought at one point that I wouldn't play again, and uh, as I said many times before, uh, um, I just um, am thankful that I, I get an opportunity to get back and play because I love to play. There's the upside. Last night at the Garden, a couple of Ranger firsts. First, Ron Smith garnered his first win as a club's head coach. And Eddie Olczyk scored his, you got it, first goal in a blue sweater. Rangers had their way with Ottawa 6-2, handing the Senators their 14th straight loss. And finally, so what's up next for President George Bush? He'll be out of the White House in 13 days, you know, or so. Could it be he's going to be collecting baseball cards? Not gonna do it. Gonna give his own cards away to Reggie Jackson. You guys be jealous, I know, on this. You got the man in there. Yeah, the man right there. Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson. Paid a visit to the president, but didn't stay the night. He thought it wouldn't be pretty. Not at this juncture. 
I'm Scott Clark, and that's it for sports. Diana? <laughs> Keep the sports job. Just ahead, the cold weather has returned. Now the rain is threatening to do the same. Sam Champion tells us if we're going to need an umbrella. Coming up next in the Accurate Weather Forecast. No price increase and only $2.19 a month. What else would you expect from your local Chevy Geo dealer? Hair loss is a continual process. Started when I was about 22, 23. I was practically bald. Men's hair now can make you look like you used to. They've got this Dermabond process. It's completely undetectable. My girlfriend doesn't even know about it. It's so easy. <laughs> Call Men's Hair Now and have a successful, active lifestyle again. Be yourself again. For gradual or immediate hair replacement, call Men's Hair Now, 1-800-HAIR-202, 1-800-HAIR-202. Huffman Coo semi-annual sale, 25 to 55 percent savings on all leather sofas, chairs, and more, plus no payments and no interest for one full year. Huffman Coo's, the Northeast Furniture Leader. Les Miserables, the world's most popular musical. Call 239-6200. Don't miss it. Sam Champion is here now with the weather. Are mm -hmm. we going to need an umbrella? Short term, we'll probably have a few sprinkles here and there. Long term, we're a little more concerned about it maybe being in freezing form as it hits this weekend. But we'll show you all the possibilities and why we think these things might happen. 41 degrees outside right now, relative humidity at 70%. Barometer is falling a little bit. We've got some systems bringing some moisture in our direction. Southeastern winds at 3 miles per hour. Again, we're at 41 now. 44, the warmest temperature of the day. 64 would have been a record. Here's a look at the uh, satellite picture. We'll show you all the clouds stacked up on the east coast. We'll deal with them, well, cut them in half and deal with them like this. Southern half, there are a lot of areas of low pressure that are picking up moisture on the Gulf and they'll be running along the eastern seaboard over the next three or four days. We also have a front that has got substantially colder air behind it moving in the same direction, both of them headed toward the eastern seaboard. Now, here's what happens. As all of this moisture stacks up along the east coast, it stays put cold air moves in quickly. We're talking about the cold front actually moving through during the daytime hours tomorrow, and that's why we think we could have a weak sprinkle in the sky since we're dragging up some, well, southeastern moisture or just ahead of that front, so maybe one or two sprinkles before the midday time when this front finally does make its way through. Colder air funnels in. We don't really lose the clouds, though it'll dry out for a moment, and then we watch more and more moisture collect closer to the cold air. That could put us in a position where by Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, we're watching a freezing mix and it may even be some snow in the area. It's either going to be uh, some kind of form of snow. We don't know exactly how much yet because we're not dealing with the moisture totals from the coastline or it could be a freezing rain event. So we're keeping a close eye on it. Other thing that goes along with this is we will have some northeasterly winds by Saturday. Saturday coming very close to a full moon, which is Friday. Also, those gusty winds, higher than normal tides, which could mean that the Jersey shoreline from central Jersey southward will see some extra high tides. Also, the tip end of Long Island. So be prepared for that. Could be a rough weather uh, weekend for us. 36 degrees, mostly cloudy and chilly for the next 24 hours. Not that big of a problem. Mostly cloudy skies and 40 degrees tomorrow. A spotty shower here or there, most likely before the noon hour. But then by Saturday and Sunday, we think the temperatures are certainly cold enough to support a little freezing moisture and probably a little snow around the area. Mm, okay, we'll be watching. Thank you very much, Sam. Coming up tonight at 11, the solace of a Greenwich, Connecticut church is shattered by charges that a priest has sexually abused some parishioners. We will have a live report in turmoil at New York's hometown newspaper. Will pink slips turn into a boycott against the Daily News? We'll have that and more coming up tonight at 11. That does it for this edition of Eyewitness News. For Sam Champion, Scott Clark, I'm Diana Williams. Have a good night.